and welcome to lesson number 59 in our current micro series in lockdown 3. Today is the 31st of March 2021 and it signifies the final day of those who are shielding to have to remain at home. So there's some little light to look forward to tomorrow when you may perhaps venture out of that front door. Today we are looking at um, a little look into the world of the harmonics on the cello. And this study, number 59 in the set of 60, says it is for natural and artificial harmonics. And it begins by showing you um, the location of various natural harmonics on each string, just looking at arpeggios that relate to the string. What does this mean? So the pattern is going to be the same on each string that we look at. So let's start with the A string, which is where it begins. And as you already know, um, I'm sure, that when you're thinking of a harmonic, you naturally will think of this one, which is the very first one we try out in your adventures on the cello as you reach past the fourth position. And it's an exciting moment where you can find a note without having absolute accuracy. You can get that harmonic over quite a geographic range. But what is it? At this point, you're touching the string at its half length. So that the note A, which is oscillating at 220 uh, frequencies there, um, it hertz, I beg your pardon, it is an octave higher at 440 hertz. So here's the high A, and there's the octave lower, exactly half of the frequency and it's half of the length of the string and just by touching it we can hear that natural harmonic. Now as you'll know you can press it down and hear the same note. Now let's have a little investigate of the other divisions of the length of string. Um, another one that you will know probably is, um, let's actually stick to the A's, might be the next octave up. So the next A up, which of course I can press down and find, but if I just touch there, I'm now actually touching at a quarter of the length of the string. So where this was half, between the bridge and here, if I touch a quarter, a half again, creating a quarter length, where I touch there is now another octave higher, at 880 hertz. And we can actually find that quarter mark at this end of the cello, so where you normally play fourth finger D, just touch there, Aha! and there you have the two octave higher A from the open string because you're touching at a quarter of the length of string. So you're just creating a different waveform and it's now vibrating at um, four times the speed of the open string. Bear with me. Um, others that are useful and very common would be the E's which you'll probably have discovered. You can obviously again play this E, either press down or touch at that same location, gives you the same high E. Um, but of course we've confirmed it here, where pressing gives you the octave lower and touching gives you the octave higher. Now this division of the string is one third of the string length, and that is creating a fifth above um, the fundamental note. So the fundamental is A, it's a fifth high, it's on the E, is what we're hearing there. Um, and the other, there are uh, two others, they've popped in here, uh, other notes that we'll be use, looking at and thinking about. And one of them is actually then this note as a C sharp. Now you're, I'm playing it by touching where you normally have F sharp. This is again, of course, a different um, division of the string length, it's a fifth. So if that is a C sharp, we would expect to find it here. Ooh, and we do. So that's where my C sharp is if I were to press down. And I can just touch and I have the C sharp. And it's at a fifth division, which must mean we can find it somewhere else. So let's try another fifth division. Ooh, it's true. So it's actual fact it's right over an octave 
above the C sharp that you'll know in this location. Touch it and you've got the high C sharp. And there must be one more to find and that would be here where you play a C sharp with the third finger. Sorry. Find that little secret note. So I'm just touching, now I've found the C sharp again. So I've got one, two, three and four of them, which means I've got five divisions of the string there. There are five different um, identical lengths. So these are natural divisions of the list string length, which gives you the perfect notes within the harmonic series, um, which for those of interest, in this case would be, you'd have a fundamental A, you'd do the octave higher as the first in the sequence, and then a fifth, a fourth, a major third, minor third, and then they gradually get smaller and smaller. Um, any others that are useful on there? Let's have a look. So we've also got one. We also have one here. This is a sixth of the length of the string. So in actual fact, where we have the E for a third of the length, if we cut that one in half, we find an octave higher E. So it will work again similarly here. If we've got an We've got this third of the length of the string, so if I go here, where my high E would be, the, pretty much the end of the fingerboard, that's a sixth of the length of the string, and that's another E. So basically, overall, we've got, if it's a half or a quarter, it's the, it's the A at different octaves. If it's a third or a sixth, it's the E at different octaves. And we've also found that we can find the, the C sharp, which is part of A major, um, at locations where you play C sharps. There's three there that you know where they are. And there's a hidden one where we would normally press for an F sharp. Actually, it's also at a sixth division and it's also a C sharp harmonic. Now, without necessarily understanding all of those ideas, but maybe getting a flavour for how we discover these hidden secret notes, uh, you can just play what's written. So when they uh, write a harmonic, a natural harmonic, you get the little sort of diamond shape rather than a minimum sort of, um, uh, it's not quite an oval, but ecliptic sort of shape, elliptic shape rather. Um, you get a more of a diamond shape open note at the location to touch. So we'd have written here, looks like E, D, F sharp, but we're only touching, so we're getting E, A, C sharp. You just play where it says to touch, but lightly touch only, and you'll find these lovely arpeggio notes. Take the same shape on the D string and we'll have the notes from D major. And again, G. And on the C. strings can be harder to find exactly where those are and always it's a good idea to use a relatively fast but light bow speed. So there we are the natural harmonics as presented in the first line of this study and then it has a little allegretto uh, few lines where you're just trying out those notes in the context of some arpeggiate sort of shapes. Let's just try it. So it's in D major this.
So there in the very last line, you really get a sense of the connection between the half and the quarter. And notice that when we played on the D string, one third, um, playing you know, the, we had the A's there, because of course the third higher than D is A. So there's a lovely connection between the two strings, which the study will draw you to finding that if it's a bit unfamiliar for you. Bear with it. Now thinking about some applications of the natural harmonics before we look further at artificial ones. Um, I mean a case in point where you might use these would be the Shostakovich cello sonata in the scherzo movement where there's a pianissimo semiquaver glissando of natural harmonics so finding them they are up for D string and A string typically I mean it actually covers uh, to C string as well uh, and G. So we have these notes. <laughs> In fact, if you just use your thumb and swipe up and down, you actually, if you get the right speed of it, you hear them just by sliding your thumb up and down. Isn't that amazing? So there's a little insight into the world of the cello sonata and some, obviously the composer truly understanding the instrument. Now let's move on to the artificial harmonics. Now this time, um, when you need to play an artificial harmonic, I mean, most typically, what you'll see is a printed normal note, and above it, the little diamond-shaped note. And what it's meaning is that you need to stop or press down the lower note um, and just touch the upper. So in the example um, in the study, it's got a thumb on my C here. And then it's, it tells you initially just to play a fourth higher. So there's C to F. Now I'll just touch with my third finger instead of pressing. And it's actually created me now a C two octaves higher than the one that I'm stopping. Now if we think about that relationship to the open string idea, when we said with the open A, half was one octave, and quarter was two octaves. So effectively what we're doing when we stop the string, we now change the length of the string, I've shortened it, and the natural hand span with the, the third finger out a perfect fourth away is of actually cutting that new string length into a quarter. So I will always have a note that's two octaves higher, the one where my thumb is holding. I mean, don't worry, you can also find them holding with the first finger and I'm just touching with my little finger reaching out there so if you find that your thumb is a bit sore or you're not so comfortable using that you can still discover these artificial harmonics with holding or stopping the string with the first finger and reaching out with the little finger. So let's have a little look at this line that's been given to us. So on the way up, it's just helping you know and feel the distance. In actual fact, with this study, it's a little bit harder to actually play the stop notes and then a harmonic on and off on and off it's actually a lot easier for the technique and the speech of the instrument if you are playing harmonics one after the other rather than stopping and starting and that's the example they give you so the descent is all of those artificial harmonics and i think you may find those easier and you may even like to go up the same way Something like that. Now, final uh, point on these harmonics is another example. Actually, it's also Shostakovich, but this time um, from his Piano Trio Opus 67, um, it opens muted harmonics on the cello. It's very ethereal. I mean, I'm not going to put my mute on, but just so you get an idea about how this works in practice in a piece of music. 
so that you're beginning with a very wide stretch here from a B natural. Now there you'll see that I momentarily have used a natural harmonic with my second finger on a D before coming back to the, um, sorry, my second finger's over D, I'm playing an A to a B. Um, so it gives you an example of, oh, actually in practice, playing that natural harmonic. And of course, a whole time that the challenge of the chair is that you have to slightly change the distance according to here or higher up. And there is a moment in this line, it's extremely difficult to uh, pull off every time you want to. And that is where we leap up an octave from this B. It's extremely hard that, because the, the length of the string is so, so different and trying to get the movement from here to here, very, very awkward. It's also piano and consort. But at least it gives you a little window and an insight into where these artificial harmonics are put into play. I mean, normally there are sort of smaller segments of a piece of music, but it, it is a really beautiful, ethereal opening. I mean, this actually, Shostakovich uses these harmonics for 36 bars, the opening of that piano trio. Very magical. I, I do hope that this has been uh, an interesting lesson and perhaps wet whet your appetite for the idea of exploring the secret life of the cello in harmonics. <laughs>